So every year during the week of Yom HaShoah, I um, have always shared part of my grandfather's story with my students. And it feels really weird not to be able to do that in person with students this year. So I decided to share some of his story here on YouTube instead. Um, this is my grandfather, Wolfgang Mueller. I loved him very much. I still love him very much. Um, he was born in Germany in 1919 and um, grew up in Hanover, um, but he was born in a really small town called um, Neungama or Paderborn. There are two really small towns next to each other. And his family was well known there because they owned a mill and pretty much employed everybody in the towns. And um, his grandmother, Amelia Rosenthal, was known as the Angel of Neungama. And there's actually a street that has been named after her, um, I think maybe like 15 or even 20 years ago now, um, in Neungama called Amelia Rosenthal Way that I have visited. Um, so, like I said, um, my grandfather um, was a survivor of the Holocaust, and he actually wrote his autobiography a couple of months before he passed away. He passed away in 2013, just two weeks after my youngest son was born. And this book is particularly special to me because we brought um, Jacob to meet my grandfather the night before he passed, and he signed my book. Um, so I just think it's incredible that I have this note that he wrote to me the night before he died unexpectedly. Um, but going back to his story as a survivor, not just my own personal connection to him, um, my grandfather was really young when Hitler came to power. He was just after his bar mitzvah. Um, and his mother just did not have a good feeling about Hitler. And fortunately, they were in a financial position that they could make some moves to do things that ended up saving um, my grandfather's life and his immediate family. Um, so in the summer when he was 14, um, my grandmother, or my, I'm sorry, my great grandmother sent my grandfather to England to boarding school. Um, because she just didn't want him to be in Germany and she just had a bad feeling and she thought he would be safer there. Um, she did it without discussing it with my great grandfather first and he was not happy that she did it uh, at the time, but I'm guessing in retrospect, he was very proud of her foreboding. Um, I like to read a little bit of my grandfather's book to my sixth graders every year because it amazes me that this is what was going on in his life when he was their age. Um, so his, uh, um, so he was in school in England, and I'm going to read a little bit here where it says, um, when school started, I was fairly well acclimated and soon became used to daily routines, which included cross-country running early every morning, breakfast, classes, sports, and many other activities. For Christmas break, my parents sent tickets for me to come home in Germany, in 19, come home to Germany. In 1933 to 34, that was still possible. At home, I told stories about my experiences and my parents, no doubt, I noticed I enjoyed my new environment at school. My father mentioned that it would be difficult to send tuition to England and that he had contacted Max Nordhaus, a family member in Albuquerque, to make an arrangement for Max to send money to England and um, and then Max, uh, Max would pay my grandfather's tuition in England from America and um, my great grandparents would give money to some older people in Germany that um, were family members of Max's. Um, as he was getting ready to return to England, my grandfather came up, uh, my grandfather's mother came up to his room and handed him some money to give to a friend of hers in London. She suggested that I hide the money in the grip of my tennis racket and thus carry it across the border. I was more scared of my father finding out than I was of the Nazi guards catching me. 
It was scary at the border in the train to the port when the border guards checked my papers and passport, but I passed through okay. When I delivered the package in London, I was sure glad to get rid of it. Back at school, life proceeded. I was on the school soccer team and played lots of tennis. One day, my mother came with my aunt, who brought my cousin, to start at Ewell. It was my job to take him under my wing and show him the ropes. One day, I was called to the office to take a telephone call from one of my father's cousins in Paris, who invited me to visit him at the Park Lane Hotel in, in London. The school gave me permission, and I met him in his room at the hotel. It was incredibly luxurious as I sat there and waited for him to finish getting dressed. We went to dinner, and I had never dreamed of eating such a fabulous meal. Then he took me to the movies. Finally, he hailed a taxi and accompanied me back to the railway station to catch the train back to school. In the cab, he gave me a five pound note as a gift. I was on cloud nine. I had never had such a wonderful experience. My grandfather continued in boarding school in England until he was 16. And then they were actually able to secure passage for him to come to America and come apprentice for that cousin, Max Nordhaus, that I mentioned in this part of the story. He becomes a very important part of the story because uh, my grandfather traveled by boat for two weeks to New York. And then he flew on a plane from New York to Chicago. And remember, he was 16 this whole time. And then from Chicago, he took a train to Albuquerque. And when he showed up at Max Nordhaus's door, he found out that Max had passed away during his travel. Thankfully, his other relatives took him in, took him under his wing, um, got him started in the meat business, which is the industry that he worked in for decades following. Um, Uh, I don't know. I There are more pictures that I usually like to show from his book, but they're kind of hard to see. But that's him. He enlisted in the U.S. Army when he came to America and um, served as an interpreter in England, um, interpreting German. This is him with my grandmother. And this right here is Amelia Rosenthalway, the dedication. Um, which is that road that I was telling you guys about after my great-grandmother. Anyway, um, thank you for letting me share a little bit about Wolfgang Mueller. Um, the name of his book is Wolf, Persecution, Escape, Survival, and Triumph, and it is available on Amazon if you'd like to read it. It's not the greatest book in the world, but I love it because it's filled with stories that fill me with joy. Um, if you have a survivor story, please share it. Uh, it's really important that we keep their memories alive and we keep their stories going and that we remember. I will never forget and I hope you don't either. Take care, everyone.